I want to hear Eric comment on the reevaluation of these patients. That's what I'm trying okay. to drive at, yeah. Because you taught me uh, about the, uh, the fact that you can have toxin in the stool for an extended period of time uh, after the index episode. And therefore, I'm not really sure anymore how to reevaluate those patients. So teach me how to do it. Unfortunately, many people are not informed that this could come back. And lots of those people where it does come back end up in the hospital just because diarrhea came back, they didn't know to call someone, it gets worse and worse and worse, they end up in the hospital. So, I mean, the, the first thing, if it's someone post-discharge, it's really just, you know, educating them before they're discharged that it might come back. And, and as far as if it does come back, if you get that call, you know, I... You know, again, first thing I ask is, how severe is your diarrhea? Are you having any other symptoms? If they're just having one or two loose bowel movements a day, I say, well, let's hold off. Let's wait a little bit. And you know, if, if it gets worse, give us a call. But if they're going three, four, five times a day without another explanation, if they're having fever, they're having a lot of cramping, I'll go ahead and test them. And, and, and I prefer toxin testing. Um, because it's more specific for C. difficile infection. You're less likely to detect that asymptomatic carriage you could get with a PCR-based test. Um, that many of these people post C. diff, well, you can you could detect you know, shedding again um, uh, after the C. diff resolves. But unfortunately, you know, that's, that the clinician often does not have a choice in regards to what test is performed. The, the lab they go to performs whatever test the lab performs. So some of it is also understanding what, what test type of testing is being done and to take that into context um, when you're testing the patient. And if it's positive, I talk to the patient again, I don't automatically treat. Sometimes some, peop some people with true C. diff infection, it'll go away on its own. And actually they're less likely to have a recurrence if you don't treat them. This, this brings an important point yeah. though which has to do with testing uh, someone who just recovered from a CDF episode. For a long period of time, we were actually requested, we uh, would like to transfer a patient to a rehab or nursing home, and we'll be requested to test the patient that they are now clear of CDF. And we do know that uh, after you're being tre treated successfully for CDF, you still carry those spores, and those spores are probably the uh, reservoir from which a recurrence will emerge, and you can be tested positive. And so it is important to stress that no routine testing should be done in people who responded to therapy. It's only people who redeveloped symptoms that are worse and look like their episode that actually should be tested. And what Eric is saying is that the decision who to test for CDF is, has really become a, uh, an important decision, and one should not test, and it should be based on the patient and the severity of their symptoms. Let me ask a couple of very simple questions. Why, once you've cleared this infection with antibiotics, why do people recrudesce? Well, I think CDF is, um, you already mentioned that CDF is a nightmare type of pathogen, and, and I would agree with that. And one of the reasons it's a nightmare type of pathogen is because it has a form, it has actually two forms, and one of the forms is the spore form, and we all know about anthrax spores and, and others. We know that spores are very hardy and survive in the environment. We also know that they survive uh, acid. And so spores are also not susceptible to antibiotics. And so when you treat someone with CDF who got infected with CDF and has a, a large amount of of spores in their gastrointestinal tract, the antibiotics don't really affect the spores, they affect the vegetative form of the bacteria, the form that divides and produces toxin. That's why you get better with antibiotics because the disease-causing form is eliminated, but you remain colonized with multiple spores. Those spores uh, may be dormant for a period of time, but then when you take the antibiotics away, those spores will germinate again. Uh, bacteria will come out and uh, vegetative cells will divide and produce uh, a, a toxin. So this spore reservoir is problematic because it can give you your recurrence and it's also the vehicle that you may infect other people. And it is important to remember that it is the person who, with CDF who serves as the source from which other patients will get infected. That, that's a very important point. But the other part of that, its first cousin, is that the reason that you might have gotten the C. diff in the first place is maybe your, not, not for one episode, but for uh, multiple recurrences, is your intestinal biome is not normal. And vancomycin does not cure your intestinal microbiome. So you're starting from square one again, and unless you can correct that, um, if you have an abnormality and it's not corrected, you're going to be one of those people that just doesn't get better. So the same thing that gave you a C. diff the first time is going to put you at risk for getting it again. 
Yes, except there's a little bit of a gray zone here because the intestinal microbiome for patients that only have one episode is not substantively different from normal. Okay. It's uh, only abnormal with recurrent disease. Do you recur with the same strain or do you recur with different strains? Well, that's a very good question. Um, many of those who have a recurrence have the same strain as the uh, initial episode. But there have been more and more descriptions of people who have diversity of strains. That's not only applying to recurrence, where you can have a strain that was actually different than your strain that, the, that, that caused the first episode, but also those who have one episode of CD, if you may sometimes, if you really look carefully, you can find several strains. So this is a really important question and hard to answer and, and, and may not really matter that much, uh, uh, in fact, but there is diversity of C. diff, not just in the environment, but sometimes in our gastrointestinal tract as well. It probably depends on how long it's been since your previous episode. Okay. The longer it is, the more likely you are to have a different strain. We, um, we looked at patients within 28 days of, uh, of their previous episode and about 80% of them had the same strain that caused the original episode. We have found, though, that as many as 50% might be new strains, depending how long you follow patients. 